What's one of the biggest misconceptions about you? Maybe I'm pussy. I never heard that before. <laughs> this nigga, he never heard that. <laughs> hey, yo, what up? This is Prodigy, the Dom Perignon P, the H and I C head nigga in charge, the most motherfucking infamous mob deep. Chillin' on this is 50.com, kid. You know what time it is. You up? Everybody wanna be down. They all wanna be down. They all wanna you be. You have down. to get be pussy to get killed. Trust me. There's a lot of people. You know, in the music industry, in the mm -hmm. street, they probably think that Prodigy soft or whatever, Prodigy pussy. That's the biggest misconception I could ever think of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's nothing else that you can misconstrue about me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Except that, I don't know, maybe because I'm a, I'm a fly nigga, I look good, so they think I'm a pretty boy and I'm pussy or something. You know, you've been involved in some of the most, like, prolific beefs ever, you know, I mean, not with this regular motherfuckers, you in, in beast with Jay-Z, but one that really stood out to me, and you know, I think about all the time, and I always wanted to ask you, what was your beef with Tupac? What, why was he so pissed off with y'all? You know, he had his thug-like shit going, and when we made the Infamous album, we had a song called Survival of the Fittest, and on that song in the beginning, one of my mans that just came home from jail during the 15 years, his name Ferg, has had his cousin actually, um, Ferg is on that album, and Ferg's in the beginning of the song, he says, oh, Thug like he's still living it. Thug like he's still living it. Tupac is, you know, he's the one that was most known for saying that. So I think that pissed Tupac off a little bit. He thought, he took that as disrespect, like, oh, these niggas trying to say Thug life, uh, nah, that's our shit, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't really come out and say nothing about it, though, until. Snoop and the Door Pound made the song LA LA. You know what I mean? The, the New York, New York shit, whatever. The City of Dreams. Yeah. So when they made that, you know, we um we was looking at it like, what? Like these niggas is kicking over our buildings in the video, stomping through the city. It's like real disrespectful shit that they, you know, you know was disrespectful. They knew that was disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? They knew. We went back at them niggas, you know what I mean? We made our version. LA, LA, and we, we like, oh, fuck these niggas, we holding it down. This is, you can't even go be coming through Queens and New York's kicking over buildings and shit, and nobody gonna say nothing about it. LA, LA, big city of dreams, but everything in LA ain't always what it seems. This is when Tupac first signed it to, to Death Row. So, I guess when he seen that, he figured, all right, now I'm going at these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Hard body. So he went at us. You know what I mean? And that's what that was about. Mm. Yeah. And so did you ever like, you know what I'm saying, cross paths with Tupac after that? Nah. Or we... did you ever have any ill will towards him? Oh yeah, I wanted to kill that nigga. Yeah, hell yeah. I wanted to fuck that nigga up, jump him, cut him, shoot him, all that shit. Cause it was beef. He was shitting on niggas. We was shitting on them and it was gonna be a problem if we ever saw each other. You know, I might I might have got killed, I might have got beat up, but either way it was gonna go down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When we seen each other, it was gonna be a problem. Thankfully, it never went down, but you know, it's bad that he had to die, you know what I mean? Through all that petty rap beef bullshit. That shit was corny. Didn't give a fuck about Tupac or Suge Knight or none of them motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? We was holding down New York, we was holding down Queens, we was holding down Mob D. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we took, we, we took the, what they said disrespectful, so we went right back at them. And if it was gonna be a problem, it was gonna be a problem. We got niggas just like they got niggas, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, nah, I never got to meet Tupac. We never bumped heads. Um, and we were doing shows in Cali during that whole shit. You know While all that was going on. All that was going on. We, we were number, our song LA LA was number one on LA radio. You know mm. what I'm saying? So we were going out there performing LA LA mm. in LA. And you ain't feel no type of way. Yeah, we like, did. Of course, we, we brought 10 niggas on the plane, like, all right, we're gonna see these niggas, we're gonna fuck these niggas up, mm. and then whatever. You know and there what wasn't no turbulence and stuff nah. one of your shows? Nah, because Cali always had love for Marv Deep. Before mm. Tupac, before, you know, before all the beef and bullshit, we were always in Cali, you know, promoting our music. You know mm. what I mean? And, and Cali got major love for us, and we got major love for Cali. So when all that shit was going down, Cali not looking at it like, oh, it's Cali versus New York. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They looking at it like how we were telling them it was. This, this nigga, Tupac, this nigga, Snoop and Dog Pound, trying to shit on us, and that we shitting on them. It was a dangerous time for us. I could've got killed, half could've got killed, because we was out there on the front lines, like, doing what we do. We do. LA, LA, big city of dreams, but everything in LA ain't 
ain't always what it seems. You might get fooled if you come from out of town, cause we come from Queens.